Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Together with these great partners, we are able to bring you quality information to help you reach your whitetail habitat goals quicker but more proficiently. Northwoods Whitetails Plot Doctor Harper Growing Solutions Scent Thief Real Wood Productions Ace Hardware of Harrodsburg, Kentucky. The importance of mock scrapes. There is a laundry list of things that I could tell you the reason why I use them. Um, the looking back, the reason I wish I would have started using them years ago. Having a mock scrape, placing a mock scrape in the line of travel, promoting it and making it that information station that you hear me talk of guys it's a huge huge piece of the puzzle so i highly recommend if you're not using them please do so uh it's a piece huge piece of the puzzle that i really think once you use them you won't stop using those now with that being said the, the mock scrapes can come in all different for, forms right in all different locations the couple that we're going to talk about here today guys is i always like to try to do a, a mock scrape video this time of the year and um you know maybe touch on a little you know something different than i didn't touch on in you know previous videos we know the importance of putting them there it's a stop it's a place for them to stop it's an also what i call it's my inventory stick because like you can see this one here right behind me i've got the reveal uh, camera mounted on the post there um and it's taking uh, inventory of what uses this so yes it's june and no, we're not hunting over this yet. And yes, I still have this out here. So what that tells you is, guys, is they are a 365 day a year tool, not just a 90 day have them out during the 90 day deer season. What it does is it promotes your line of travel and it really ties um, your transition and it helps build your transition. So one of the points we'll touch on here, guys, is I tell my clients this, um, when we design and, and or build a property, right? You are physically making and promoting the transition by hanging these licking branches because you're making a stop. You're making a place for them to scent check every 200 yards or 300 yards, wherever that is between stand locations, right? So with that being said, you only need one per stand location. Now, if it's one on shot plot and you can cover it and it's a rifle situation, put one on the far end of a food plot that you can see from 150 yards away, something like that, that's fine. But to have, you know, one out each window of a blind or have one out each shooting lane, that's not what you want to do. Because what happens is the more you have, the more uh, that you take from that one, one. So one is good, three is not uh, better, right, in this situation. So with that being said, the transition part of it, guys, um, when you're doing that, you're actually building the transition. What I have a lot of folks do is... You know the process that i kind of talk my clients through is focusing on your dough bedding and and uh, maybe mulching your transition and uh you know but doing a lot of you know placing of the habitat pockets and getting your tree work and your dough stationary and getting your food sources good so but that does include hanging the licking branches now you don't have to physically go through and build your whole transition um to those because this is what you'll find is if you have any question about how the deer are getting from stand to stand when you build these licking branches i'm here to tell you that what you're going to find is you're going to have a trail between them now the reason that we go the extra mile and build the transition because what you're going to have in between stand locations is you've got contour maybe that leads them off from that or goes off the property which i refer to as a bleeder or they go too far internal and we're able to bring them back out to uh, you know the line of travel and promote it so we can hunt it more proficiently right but that's exactly what happens you you put these on the line of travel this one happens to be in one of our shop plots that we're here uh today today on and i'll show you multiple other setups that we have around the farm um i've got 10 of them on 75 acres because i've got 10 tree stands right so um what you can do guys is the next year you come back to build the transition and you can pretty much walk down the transition on the deer trail um, because that's how they're navigating it. We're putting it there for a reason when we start the transition because it's on your contour. It relates to movement, but it's a huge, huge piece 
to take them to the next to, to take that to the next step and to give them something to scent check and it all is connected by a mock scrape so let's touch on this uh it's an attraction right it's a checkpoint so you don't want all your checkpoints in one spot this just happens to be on a shot plot this is i've got screen planted all the way around this we can get the the rain to work with us looks like we got rain coming for wednesday which would be great uh, but we don't want to put water hole mineral licking branch food plot all in one spot i really like to promote that you know amenities or attraction around the property on the transition this just happens to be one guys that i have a licking branch it's on a shot plot not on a food plot so i can get away from it right it's on the shot plot and i do have a mineral station right here because it's right where my transition comes out of here this is a big cedar wall if you follow the channel you know years before i bought the property they cleared the fields and this is a kind of you know big cedar wall i went up and perforated it in some locations so the does aren't completely locked in but wherever you put these large holes it creates a huge funnel and they all come out of there you know if they're going to come out there's two places three places on this food plot where they're going to come out and this is one of this is the transition so that's the reason that mineral is there because it comes the transition comes into the shot plot so they've got mineral for you know inventory for this time of the year health standard everything ties to that the licking branch is here in the shot plot and i'll show you guys where it goes out of the where the transition goes out is right there where the tractor is that'll all be grown up and it goes right over and this is all banded going to be nice and thick goes down hits the transition in that uh, holler and goes up that way connected to more, more food sources right so more dough bedding um, i don't recommend bringing your bucks into a food plot in one end and out the other end forcing them in unless it's a shot plot so reason i touch on that with these guys is this is there's multiple ways to build these right and it's all about promoting that line of travel um, this one here i'm going to turn you around here guys so you can see this this one here is on the shot plot right so what you can see is there was no tree out here and in this ground um, if you have ground that permits that you can put like a cedar something in the ground guys great this is not one of those spots so what i do um if you put just one tree one tree here guys and you put one post is that thing will turn you know especially because the tops are big like this the wind catches them and they turn and the next thing you know you're looking branches here one day and then it's over there the next day and it, that's so what i do is i run two i kind of v them post apart and then instead of getting a tree that's just one trunk i'll find one that's v'd off like that or the top of a tree this just happens to be a red bud because you can see the whole edge of the field is all red bud and and they're kind of they're they're a little flexible uh so i uh i put them there i put a v and then i tie the one post to one of them and then i I wire and, and uh, you know, rope that off on the other. But what you'll see, guys, is I've got this one arched out and tied on the back. So it's a, it gives me something to run the licking branch off from. Um, this one here is just one that I, I usually just put more uh, red bud or, you know, beech works real well for this, guys, or, or um red oak because of the that holds the leaves longer and i'll show you a little trick here what i do guys so that that's kind of how i set them up right give you something to arch them out here and if you're in snow snow country make sure that that arch that one you use is sturdy because the snow gets on it it could cut, crush them so this is one that we build off a of post i'll show you some around the farm guys that i also build off from tree tree spots that you can run a paracord or um, braced uh, two by four on each side of the tree uh, I'll show you multiple pictures of multiple different uh, styles here guys that I use but I will touch on this with this this is very very important do not ever walk up and this is a new one so I'm going to do this this is uh, this is actually the old one right there that was here from last year this one here guys is uh, a new one that i just put in but don't ever come out here and stick your hand or your scent on that because that is how they communicate with each other and they will pick you up um it's all their pre uh you know scent on there so so make sure if you're ever out with a buddy or whatever you guys are out on the farm with the kids or whatever don't don't grab a hold of that if you grab a hold of that just cut it down and replace it and put a new one up um grapevine is what we use most of um this is just kind of one that i've you know put together here and have had it here on the farm now for a couple of years and 
it's still uh, very viable, good shape. So, uh, but this situation right here, guys, I'm going to show you this, is what I've done is um, what I like to do is I get these vines or the branch hanging down here. And this, this is slick barked. I like to try to do is I use a, uh, I use one that is a, like a vine, let's say, or uh, anything that they rub on guys in your area other than pine is what I use. Uh, but something that's a little more uh, rough barked, it really soaks in the scent way more than slick bark. It rains. I just feel that that doesn't, the scent doesn't stick to these as much. Um, but I'd have to walk here. I'd have to walk a quarter mile and the older I get, I just don't like doing that if I don't have to, right? Kind of a joke, but anyway, um, yeah, so I, I try to find something like that, that that scent absorbs into more. But what I'm going with that, guys, is this. You can see these leaves. What I do with these is I take this and I cut these on a, uh, you can see that this is kind of forked right there. It's It's got, a, so this is the main branch that comes down. And I cut these off and I flip these additives upside down. So what I do is I leave these, cut these as a fork and I'll show you limbs beach like i said works real good because the leaves stay on red oak and i just after the you know licking branch is hung the vine is hung i'll find one and i'll cut one that's got like a v right here see this uh v that's on this so what that is guys is that is a spot that you take that leaves down you take that up here and you hook that in a rope or or a uh, zip tie or something that you have up here already you take it in here and you just kind of weave this through, hook it in so the leaves are down, and then that thing's not going to go out anywhere, and you just kind of hang that in there. So that is a that's the reason why we use these guys. That's kind of the process. I'll show you the ones in the timber that we use. Hang them right on the trail, put them right in their face. You can get them to walk, you know, across the field or something like that to them. Uh, but they work way better. It's just a spot to, for them to stop. It gives you a shot opportunity. It's an inventory stick for your cameras. There's scent on it. They put scent here. They're putting scent on the next one. Now all of a sudden it's all over the transition. And before you know it, you have an established line of travel that you're burning more. Um, you know, keeping them entertained. Your their mindset entertained a little bit longer, right, guys? Um, so just remember. Um, that this is a huge part of the puzzle and if you don't have them right now guys I highly highly recommend getting them uh, into production and don't put them somewhere where you can't shoot put them in a shooting lane put, in, put them on the tra line of travel in the trail right and to me guys kind of since they use them 365 days a year which I think a lot of folks don't realize they do uh, because you just relate usually relate a scrape to the, the fall right or the rut and that's not the case to use them all the time what i do is guys i get a lot of inventory late season help me figure out who's still around and who's not that's no different than the mineral at that point right so one of the last topics here we'll touch on guys is i don't uh you can see the scrape is open underneath this guys i don't take uh, herbicide or anything and spray them out i know a lot of folks on the field ones i guess do that you don't need to do that in the timber I don't spray that because if you have too much, you know, like a glyphosate, let's say, in one spot and it rains, that stuff stinks, and uh, I don't like to have that on, though. So I take a uh, an anvil here, and I actually dig them out and uh, make them level as you can. It might look pretty level to you right now, but I make sure that that thing is flat. If their their front feet are flat on it, they use them way more. And with that being said, the last piece of the puzzle is this. Whatever you do, guys, give yourself an opportunity to understand that you don't need sense artificial sense if you're going to buy anything i highly recommend calling tom witty out of michigan that has the nature's best it's pan collected it's the real scent right if you're going to use it at all the only way that i will dose these mock scrape let's say guys is i and i haven't used it in years the only the only time that i ever use it is if let's say you're going to hunt a stand in the morning and you've got a buck that's been there quite often and you know he's doing some chasing and you can try to pull him off one of those does maybe he's locked down with at that time or as soon as he comes off that doe he's surging again and you know you're going to be able to get back in there within that you know 24 hour uh, time period he's going to you know has a chance to be there then you can you know maybe sneak out but guys i have a video coming here shortly that's going to kind of tell you that um 
a lot of times folks are dosing these scrapes and they're not they're not you're not getting out of a scrape what you think you're getting out by putting urine or or uh, you know estrus let's say or any urine in those scrapes the reason for that is guys is this so let's use this as an example we're in that box blind right there on the shot this uh, shot plot okay this buck slides out of here slides out of this transition that wind that we need to hunt this is uh, here it's like a uh, north uh, west a west wind works real well on this spot what this is guys the wind has to come out of here and and go down that way for us so if he's coming out of here he can't scent check that unless he's behind it so the only way that you're gonna you know get a buck's attention that's out in the field let's say or the food plot is if the wind was this way blowing out into the food food plot all the urine and anything that you're putting on this which i never put anything on the scrape don't put anything on the licking branch itself if you're going to do anything just put it in there but i wouldn't even put nothing on it i think you'd be shocked on how much you know you don't need but with that being said guys in order for any buck or anything out in that field to get that scent you're hunting this on the wrong wind you're putting the wind you're putting the wind out there to them which tells me that you're it's wrong for the stand location right so it goes against all your line of travel you're promoting coming to the stand and you're not gaining anything you're actually making the situation possibly worse by pushing your wind the wrong way just to get a buck's attention that might be out in that food plot it's more of a visual and it's more of a they're using it when they get to it and if you have a quartering wind let's say right but this you know this situation is a little bit that's why this one works so well is because this one is is off my line of travel here about 10 feet so when they come up to it he comes out of this transition he comes out in the shot plot he can actually get between the licking branch and the blind and he can scent check that and they have i have a lot of them that go through here you can tell with that camera they just pick their nose up quick they're here i have room here to do that guys but if you think about that if that is on a trail let's say in the timber he's 10 15 yards 10 yards closer to you which is going to put him right underneath the stand if not behind your stand scent checking that right just err on the side of caution that with that guys it's not so much of you know you're looking to make sure that he can smell it as he gets to it you want him to have visited it and know that they're the does are using that and it's in the line of travel that he's going to come back and check more so i hope that one makes sense uh you don't need no pun intended right sense but you don't need that to take the risk of that and blow that scent out into that food plot just to get him to come over here because if you're blowing it out in the food plot to me he shouldn't be sitting there to begin with this is a different situation because we're on the shot plot right so um so keep that in mind guys um don't put any uh tarsal gland this is kind of a joke with me but a lot of folks out there um tom it he has one that works i've seen it work uh tom and i have joked about it together he's a huge believer in it i don't use it because how many times have you ever seen a uh, a buck his tarsal glands around his rear feet or rear legs how many times have you ever seen a buck stand on his front feet put his rear legs in the air and rub his tarsal gland all over a uh licking branch It'd make a great YouTube video, wouldn't it? I've never seen it done. So I don't put anything on there, guys. I do think that there's maybe some, you know, power that be had to put the tarsal gland in the scrape because they're peeing on it down there. I don't use that on that, and there's a lot of that stuff that you'll find, guys, that uh, it's just a stink thing that they're putting on there. Tom's had good luck with it. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I just like to leave that natural. I don't put anything on that, guys. I let that their, that pre-order will do all of that scent on there. Give it to them. If you're going to put anything, put it in the scrape. I haven't used it in years, right? So, uh, but like I said, there is a. I mean, if you're if you're there and the, you have a short window and you can only hunt three days on the farm or something like that, and and you know you can get to that. The biggest one of the big things is too is guys don't walk out. Uh, to me, it's it's a, another piece of the puzzle, right? You get to the stand. Why I don't use them a lot anymore or, or dose these, I use the scrapes, but I don't dose the scrapes anymore is because when I get to that tree stand, I go right up the stand and I'm in and my I'm ready to go quiet as I can possibly be. 
that 25 yards from you getting to that stand to that licking branch could be uh, the, the end of the story of bumping a buck, any deer or bumping a buck out of that that's bedded close. I just don't, I just don't go to them guys. I get to the stand, I climb up. So hence the reason I don't have to come out here. If I'm not using scents, I don't have to come out here and dose it. I give it to them. You'll see that that scrape guys, I opened that when I was first here and anytime I have to, you know, I've got too much water, too much coffee in me when I'm out here on the farm working, I need to get rid of it. I urinate in those scrapes. Um, so I do do that, but I don't add anything to them. Another thing is this, guys, last topic we'll touch on, like I said, there's a hundred of these, right, uh, reasons why. But anything that you see, if you're out tracking a deer, um, or if you're, you know, you're doing some timber work before the season and you can see an old scrape that isn't one of yours, a natural scrape that's on the trail or maybe on the, the field edge, you know, up through here, cut them down. What that does, guys, is it puts more attention on your licking branch here at the point of impact. But with that being said, don't go looking for them in the fall after they make them and cut them down. I know that actually there are some people that promote you to do that, and I don't do that. If they're if they're making them and you happen to trip across one tracking a deer, cut it down, get rid of it, uh, leave that leave the branch right in their scrape shut it down and it puts more attention on yours don't go looking for them though guys you're just putting more pressure in the woods that you don't need to so get them prepped june is a great month to get them out in the, in the field multiple different ways that you can do it to do them so with that being said guys like i said there's just a laundry list of stuff that i can make an hour-long video here on on these scrapes and why to use them and how to use them but definitely use them on your property this year thanks guys